Hello and welcome back to the channel. About this time a year ago, maybe a little bit later in the year, Samsung unveiled their S20 lineup and I did make a video about the S20. Gonna be really honest with you, I haven't used the S20 a whole lot over the last year, aside from the initial video I made about it, just a bit here and there, kind of as a secondary device. Normally, in non-pandemic years, I would be traveling a lot more, I would be going to and from an office and whatnot, so having a secondary, a backup phone is definitely really helpful for that, but I hate to say, just over the last year, I haven't had a whole lot of reason to, so I have this very pristine S20 that's just been kind of sitting here in my office for the last year. However, as I mentioned, it's been almost a year since I made a video about that, which means that Samsung has unveiled their new line of devices, and I have here in front of me the S21 5G. As I mentioned in last year's video, I'm not a huge fan of the larger devices, the ultras and the pluses and the whatever, so I do tend to go for the smaller ones. The funny thing, looking at the differences between the S20 and the S21, when the S20 was released, it was $999. It was a thousand bucks. The S21 is $800. And the funny thing about it is, Samsung was and possibly is offering a trade-in on the S20 and other previous models, as they always do, but they offered $700 for the S20, which I, again, I have sitting here right next to me. So $700 off of 800 and because I ordered early, I guess it was a pre-order bonus, there was, a, I think, $150 in credit, as well as this free Samsung Smart Tag, which I'll take a look at it at some point, probably not in this video, but let me know if you wanna see more about that. So I just sort of took advantage of that, and for the $150 in credit, I ended up picking up the Rugged Protective Cover, cause you know, with these kind of devices, if you drop them, they're gonna get damaged very quickly. I figured a free case for it. I was gonna buy a case anyway. Then I also picked up the Wireless Charger Trio, which as you can see here, it does work with their phone, the Beans, which I don't have. I think it probably also works with the Buds and the Buds Plus, which we do have. The watch, which again, I don't have. And it says nine hours of battery. Then on the back there, you can see three-in-one wireless charging supports up to three devices simultaneously. Internal six coils expand charging coverage area works with the Galaxy Watch, and it has nine watts of fast wireless charging. So that's pretty cool. Again, I may not look at these in this video. I'll probably pull out the case very quickly, but if you want to see more about the accessories that came with it, let me know. For today, though, I'm just going to pull out the S21, maybe give a quick comparison to the S20, because I actually have to pack it up and ship it out for that $700 trade-in credit that I could not turn down. Just comparing the boxes, because I do tend to keep boxes year to year. S20 versus S21. Look at that. Kind of like Apple did, almost exactly like Apple did. S20 S21, significantly smaller footprint, pretty much exactly the same left to right, top to bottom, but they're not including a charger in the newer model, so don't expect that. And as I said with the iPhone, I rarely use the included chargers. I know some people do, but when the newest phone is less expensive than last year's model, that additional couple hundred dollars, you could spend some of that and get a really cheap third-party charger. I've actually been kind of working on a video about some of these chargers from Aki. They're 18 and 20 watt chargers, very reasonably priced. Possible video on that coming up soon. Too many things to do, too little time. So there's there's this Samsung piece of paper. There's the phone, which we'll just put out of the way for the moment. It says cable inside. So here is the USB-C to USB-C cable. A quick reference guide introducing the S21 series, terms and conditions. And of course, wouldn't be complete without the SIM ejector tool here on the back. And then finally, the phone itself. Just putting them up side by side here. You can see very, very similar in terms of footprint. Although just very first thing, holding them in the hand, I can feel the difference already. Last year's model had glass all over the back. This year's model, from what I understand, the S21 is polycarbonate on the back. So this is plastic, this is glass. I don't care all that much about glass on the back, realistically. I'm so used to having plastic phones. Oh, there's that plastic coming off. I'll just go ahead and get all of this off. And then here on the front, then there's even a protective plastic strip all the way around the outside. If you can see that, just lots and lots of little pieces of plastic kind of everywhere. Okay, I think that's everything. So from the front, kind of hard to tell the difference between the two. Over on what I would consider the right-hand side, you still have the volume rocker and the power button slash Bixby button. Over on what I would consider the left-hand side, still nothing. Although it would appear that there's an additional, I would guess an antenna band right there that you don't have on the S20. On the top, previously you had the micro SD card slot, SIM card slot, not on the top of the S21. However, on the bottom, that's where, again, USB-C, speaker, microphone, and in this case, SIM card slot. Let's go ahead and pop that one up, see the differences. And in this case, you get the SIM card, that is it. 
So no expandable storage on the S21, where on the S20 you had micro SD as well as SIM card slot. Just to be very straightforward, I actually haven't used the micro SD slot in several years. And then on the back, from what I understand, camera is exactly the same, it just looks a little bit different. So just looking over at the spec sheet, it looks like they are both 64 megapixel telephoto, 12 megapixel wide angle, and 12 megapixel ultra wide angle. Doesn't have any of the new 108 megapixel fun stuff that the ultras and the ultra pluses and the ultra mega galaxies stuff have. <laughs> That's fine by me. On the front we do still have the same 10 megapixel front-facing selfie camera and I think some of the other key differences you might notice here is the front screen they're both still 120 hertz AMOLED panels but the new one does 1080p it's 421 ppi where the S20 was 563 ppi so it's going to be a slightly lower resolution screen. Again it's a it's not a massively huge screen so 1080p probably going to be fine. If you're buying the cheapest phone of the flagship series, it's probably okay. However, again, it's a new generation. You are going to see a newer version of software and a newer processor. Snapdragon 888 versus the 875 in the previous model. And the previous model did get upgraded to Android 11, which the S21 is shipping with Android 11. If it weren't, I'd be a little confused. And that's actually the biggest differences between the two of them. Let's take a quick second, get this thing powered on, get it initially set up and just see how it looks and how it feels. I do kind of like this matte plastic back again. It doesn't feel cheap. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break or anything. It's not as cold and slippery as the glass of previous years. I don't mind. That's the biggest thing. I think that's like the subtitle of this video is cheaper device, I don't mind. Just go through all the setup real quick. I don't have a SIM in it at the moment. Get it on my Wi-Fi. And a couple of minutes later, we're at the point where it's asking if I want to copy apps and data. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for now. And I think I'll come back in a few minutes once I've finished setting this up with a couple of camera samples. And here we go. First video coming out of the Samsung Galaxy S21. I unfortunately went ahead and hit the reset button, the factory reset on the S20, so I don't have a second device to compare this to. I did do a very quick sort of back and forth between them, and the footage looked very similar. The new one looked a little bit less red on both the rear-facing and front-facing. So maybe it's the screen on the phone, maybe it's the camera. Worst case scenario, I will put a link down below to where you can take a look at my S20 video from last year, where I also compared to the S10. So you can just take a look at that back and forth and, and see how things have changed, see if this is any better or not. This does also have 8K24 as an option, but I'm, I'm not going to jump up that high. 4K60 is also an option, which is always loved but not used by me. This video is going to be 4K24, so 4K30, what I'm filming at now, will be down res to 4K24, and that's perfectly fine. And here we go on the front-facing camera. This, again, is why it's nice to have a good front-facing camera, because I just looked at the rear-facing footage, and I was definitely not framed up appropriately. Sorry about that. Also, I was not using the ultra-wide, so maybe I'll go back and try that one again in a minute. But this is what the front facing looks like. This is 4K, 30 frames a second video. This is totally usable footage. The audio is something that I will find out about whenever I pull this into the computer, but hopefully it sounds okay. Hopefully it sounds usable. Uh, it looks like it's very shaky as I kind of move around. Maybe I'll just quickly walk around the room. It does look like it's a little jerky. That's kind of a, a Samsung thing in my experience is it tries to focus on the face and, and sort of jerks around a little bit as you move. So let's just see what it does. Maybe it'll fix it in post with software and whatnot, but sorry, the office is a mess. And we're back on the rear facing camera, 4K, 30 frames a second on the ultra wide. So you should be able to see a whole lot more of the room of what's going on around me and everything. Just gonna quickly, sorry for spending so much, but that's a whole lot of space to be able to see in one shot. That is impressively wide, as you would expect from what they call an ultra wide angle lens. This is just some quick video samples here in my office, in my studio lighting that's very bright. And just to get some comparable outdoor footage, this is the front facing camera, 4K 30 frames per second on the S21. And now the rear facing camera, this is the standard, the wide angle. Now I'll click over and go to the ultra wide angle. This is 0.5x. From what I understand, slightly different from the S21 Ultra. It's a 0.6x, so this is ever so slightly wider. Maybe I'm wrong there, but I think that's correct. And then the telephoto, that's 3x. Let's see if I can get that tree in frame. Yeah, so that's 3x all the way back out to 0.5. It's a pretty decent sized zoom. Then we should also be able to go a little farther in. So that's 12x. So this is as far as I can zoom while on the video mode. 
But there you have it. Just a little bit of outdoor footage. Very gloomy, overcast winter day. Wanted to sort of let you see how it works with a cloudy day outdoors, not sitting inside. Because the inside footage that I took looked very, very grainy anytime I got away from the studio lights. And that's kind of what you would expect from a cell phone camera, unfortunately. It does get very grainy very quickly. But outdoors, just looking at the screen, looks great. The zoom... It, it always leaves a bit to be desired. And we're back. I have actually gone through and completed the setup process for the S21, and I've gone ahead and done the factory reset on the S20, as I mentioned in the camera test and stuff we just did. So here's the phone, and if I go ahead and just do this, it wakes up, it logs me in and everything, just using a fingerprint. Let's go through again just so you can see that. There you go. Definitely getting a lot faster, so let's just tap it. Yeah, that's significantly better than the first generation they did the underscreen. Much, much improved in terms of what comes on it because I did not restore anything. This is just plain out of the box. Google software, lots of it. Microsoft software, LinkedIn, Office, OneDrive, and Outlook. That's an interesting selection, but what you would expect. A few Samsung things that are not going to be used by me. Just going to be real honest there. Some more standard applications. Samsung Free, Samsung Global Goals, lots of Sam Why are all the Samsung softwares not in the Samsung folder? A little bit curious about that one, but again, it's not a huge deal. And that's most of it. I mean, it does come with Spotify, so if you have a problem with Spotify, it is already pre-installed, but there is an uninstall button there. It comes with the tips, so I'm gonna go ahead and see. Yeah, I can't remove the tips. I don't even have an option to disable that, so that's a little bit of a bummer that there's a piece of software I cannot remove without rooting or doing some sort of other modification to the device. It also has YouTube Music installed. That's very interesting. I wonder if it pulled that down somehow automatically. It says setup complete, so what did, if anything, what did it pull of mine? And I don't think that it installed anything specific. I didn't tell it to install anything. And of course, as you might have seen there, if I swipe over, you do get the Google home screen, Google cards, whatever else they call it. Oh, and there's even an article right here featured at the top about Andy Sly. He's a Tesla YouTuber from Louisville, Kentucky, not too far from where I live. I've been meaning to reach out to him for a while to talk about Tesla stuff and YouTube and everything. But so far, I mean, just swiping around the interface and everything, everything is smooth and snappy. I, I like the animations. They're very quick. Usually swiping over on this on an older device would take a long time. It did take a little bit of time the first time that I swiped over on it, but it's fast, it's smooth and fluid. That 120 hertz refresh rate is definitely very nice, very handy. There's that motion smoothing adaptive versus standard. So standard is 60 hertz, adaptive can go up to 120, and I think the lowest end is 48. So you're still gonna get a good refresh rate, but when it doesn't need it, it doesn't use it. Although the higher end devices I think go as low as 10. I can sort of see that as being good for battery life, but you're gonna have a bigger device and a bigger screen and it's gonna eat more of your battery. So all in all, just sort of very early thoughts and impressions of the device and I can always come back and make a follow-up on this if you guys would like to see it. It feels good in the hand. I'm definitely going to be putting this case on there just to protect it. Speaking of which, I'll figure I'll just go ahead and open that and do that right now. Ooh, that's a very nice feeling case. Doesn't exactly feel like what I would have expected. This pops out just to be a little kickstand. Feels a little flimsy. Oh, this pops out as well. So I guess you could have multiple different angles. I'm curious if that'll affect the wireless charging. Let's just get this in place though. Slide it on. Yep, pops on very easily. Oh, I like the way that that feels. Very grippy texture around the outside. Port is open, easily reachable. No headphone jack to deal with, of course. And I just took it over to my Qi charger and it was able to Qi charge with this on the back. I kind of figured these flip out legs would impact the ability to charge, but no issues there. Let's see what it does this way. So if I flip this out, it can stand up like that. If I flip out the other one, I don't know. I don't understand it. I'll read up some more on this, and if you want to know more about the accessories that I purchased, let me know, and I'll see what I can do. But I think that's where I'll wrap it up. I've been talking for entirely too long. Really like the, the grippy texture around the edge of this case. Love that. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what else you'd like to see about this phone or, or out of this channel in general. As you may have seen as we kind of walked around the room, I am inundated with things to do, but I'm also inundated with things to do for my day job. And I'm going to be changing jobs in the next few weeks, so I'm going to be inundated yet again, but that's perfectly fine. That's how the day job is supposed to go. But again, thank you so much for watching, for sticking around, for watching my videos for 11 years now. If you like the video, I would appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up down below. It definitely is supposed to help the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified when new videos do come out. It is relatively infrequent, so don't expect to be spammed with hundreds of videos per month or anything. <laughs> I do well to do like a couple of videos a month, and I would love to get back up to doing one or maybe even two a week eventually. Let me know what days would be good for you, what times. I've got so many videos to do, but I don't know like what days of the week to put them out on. Anyway, I will see you again next time. Bye guys.